have to be your biggest fan. And when things are really tough and they're really rough and nothing's working, but there's something inside of you that says, I just have to follow that. Because you don't know who you're going to be. Who you're gonna be. Hi, can I get a ticket to Sausalito? Round trip? It's okay that you're feeling blue cause I'm here to stay Okay I'll be back I know there's a way Cause Ooh. if I'm being true I must say that I know what you're going through What you going through All the funny stuff that's going through your head now Oh I know it's hard to shake off but trust me now that you Yesterday I lost the battle Trying at all costs oh, To keep you, babe Oh, to keep you, babe Quick a reminder, tickets will be collected when we'll you get off the bus in San Francisco. If you haven't already purchased your ticket, please go down on the first deck of the boat in the forward part. Oh, I lost you, babe. What's up everyone? If you're new here, my name is Desiree LeCap, aka LeCapture. I'm a filmmaker, DP, editor, and a content creator. But if you've been here already, I'm super grateful to have you back. Hello! Look, I know it's been a minute since we've been here, but for all good reasons, all right? So stay tuned for that. Okay, but in the meantime, I was lucky enough to be one of the few people that Sure had sent their sample lenses to for their new drop, okay? Their Sniper Series Autofocus APS-C lenses. short in the intro of this video was shot entirely with the lenses and I'm juiced to walk through the good, the bad, which is kind of barely any, and well, the great things about it. I've had these lenses for a few weeks now, probably about two months, and I can honestly say for the price, the built, and the very low fast aperture, it really is a bang for your buck. And just a disclaimer out there, I think they're currently doing the Indiegogo campaign, but it seems like it's priced each lens for about 350 with a percentage discount that makes it $299. Or if you were to get all three lenses in one, it gives you a discount for buying all three. But honestly, regardless of it, totally worth it. Okay, so I'm gonna walk through the physical aspects, then we're gonna dive into how good the autofocus is, the video quality, and show you some examples of the other shots that I've taken with it. Starting with the physical aspects, all right? It comes in black, silver, or white, which personally, I'm not a fan of the white lenses or just white camera gear because they tend to stand out a lot more and like the scuffs may be a little bit more noticeable. But with that being said, it looks and has that ceramic feel to it. Honestly, it is dope that they gave options for colors in case you wanted to go a different route than just the normal black color. On the lenses itself, we have this silver gray metallic in front of it. In terms of focal lengths, it comes in 23 millimeter, 
33 millimeter and 56 millimeter, all having a super fast aperture of f1.2 with a 58 millimeter filter thread size. And there are selected mounts, so it's for Nikon Z, Sony E, and Fuji X mount. So the focus wheel itself to me personally is a little more loose feeling than other lenses I've used. So if you manually focus, you gotta be pretty precise with it. Honestly, the fact that these are prime autofocus lenses blows my mind. A lot of cinema lenses are usually manual focus, so you always need a focus puller helping you out. So this is great for people, especially those who film themselves. Cause I film a lot of my content usually by myself. I tend to rely on autofocus unless I'm putting an object in frame and manually focusing it. You left me stranded, looking like a fool. Oh, those nights alone in our bedroom. What a picture. You said one thing. Speaking of their autofocus capability, there's definitely less breathing, but also it does depend on your lighting and subject and if it's kind of trying to understand what to focus on. But for the most part, it supports object and eye tracking with quick autofocus. In my opinion, it's done a fantastic job with autofocusing without any breathing. And to me, that's a big factor. It also depends on the type of camera body that you have and the capabilities of that camera body's autofocus. So the quick, reliable autofocus caught me by surprise, honestly. I'm loving it so far. In terms of the quality of videos, I've realized if you're at the lowest f-stop at 1.2, then you have to be super precise with manually focusing it, like I mentioned earlier. Because without an external field monitor, it may be hard to get pretty accurate with it, because it tends to soften up what you're trying to focus. I've had moments where I manually focused and the subject or object was a little softer because it wasn't on point. As to when you have a bigger screen, like an auto most or any other field monitor to ensure your manual focus is on point, it's easier to be accurate with it. Aside from that, it really creates beautiful bokeh and this, this like blur at the edge of your frame, depending on if you have foreground objects, it honestly just makes it feel so movie-like, right? And the image quality for the price overall is really, really good. Oh, I can sing, I can dance, so just a few pros and cons, which is kind of barely any. Starting with the pros. So the price is not at all comparable to higher end cinema lenses or just lenses in general, especially with this fast of an aperture, autofocus, and it being prime. If you're just getting into filmmaking or videography or even photography and looking for a good prime lens with fast aperture, you cannot go wrong here. Second, the low aperture, of course, because I say I said aperture like a few times, but the key factor is that it allows more light in, especially great for low light scenes or situations or photos. And of course, the autofocus capabilities. Like I mentioned earlier, the fact that it doesn't breathe as much or struggle makes it feel like someone is pulling focus for you. Now, on the other hand, with cons, which is honestly barely a con, but I do have a full frame camera, so it would be a lot more accurate for crop censored cameras. For example, for this being attached to my Sony a7S III, which is a full frame, I do have vignetting on my footage, especially with the 23 millimeter, cause it's a little bit wider. And because I keep the Super 35 off, since if it was turned on, I wouldn't have the capability to film in 4K. And two, it would actually punch into about 35 millimeter instead of 23. So what I mean by that is a 23 millimeter lens on an APS-C crop sensor, sensor camera has roughly the equivalent view of a 35 millimeter lens on a 35 millimeter full frame camera. Does that make sense? All in all though, I would give these lenses a 8.5 out of 10. Okay, maybe a nine because of the fairly 
budget-friendly price and considering how much of a beast it is for that price, I mean, it's kind of a win-win. Because in some cases I could, actually in most cases, I could see myself using this like for interviews, I've shot a few interviews with it already. For short films, I could definitely see myself using this. I use it for a lot of other collaborations. It creates this beautiful light flirt in the lenses. Honestly, it's obviously not as sharp as a high-end cinema lens, but it is there for the price. So let's give it a nine out of 10. Honestly, it's, I'm super happy to be back on the YouTubes. I know it's been a while. There's a lot that has been going on I actually recently completed project 30 which is on my social media pages it was every day where i kind of did daily vlogs and posted it the day of so i filmed it i edited it and i posted it the same day a lot of people did ask if i planned those ones and honestly i didn't unlike youtube videos or collaborations or bigger shoots project 30 was more for me to have pure fun with it. It's really opened my eyes because if I don't overthink on a project or a shot and I just allow myself to be free, create, and have fun without thinking twice, then that's where my best work honestly comes out from instead of just sitting there contemplating too much. So Project 30 was that purely for me to learn about myself, to learn more about how to edit things and what works for me and you and like all that stuff. And yeah, I mean, go ahead and check that out and have fun with it. Cause yo, it really did help me out and it grew my audience. That wasn't primarily my goal, but it did help. So I'm happy to be back. Please make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, follow me on all my socials. Cause I'm literally posting there every single day. I appreciate y'all so much. Be great, go out and create and have fun doing it. I'll see y'all at the next video. Peace. We're back, we're back. And then I'm heading to the...